When you're attempting to adapt a much-loved story into a movie or a video game, it's a road fraught with danger. David and Goliath is one of those stories. On the surface, it's the ideal story to adapt into a video game. It's got conflict, it's got drama, it's like the ultimate boss fight. It's also a story that epitomises many of the challenges of turning a Bible passage or story into a game. Like many others, I love this story. I think it's one of the most exciting chapters in the whole Bible. And many have tried to turn it into a game, including many of my friends. And I have to say sorry up front to those people. I love you. Please don't be mad at me that I'm going to say things. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And Righteous Tales David vs Goliath is still in many ways the best Bible game out there. And if you're on iOS, you should totally try it. So having spent years moaning about why people get David and Goliath games so wrong, it's a little bit scary to have got to this stage in our own project, The Serpent and the Seed, where we're having to tackle David and Goliath for ourselves. Can we do justice to this amazing story and create a compelling game experience in the process? Well, let's find out. But firstly, why is it so hard to make a good David and Goliath game? Well, to answer that, we're going to need to think about something called a Ludo narrative. What? Ludo has a narrative? Well, kind of, but no. Well, actually, Ludo is just the Latin word for game. <laughs> We're all used to the idea of games with a narrative, the story that the game tells you. But what might be less obvious is that there's a second story that all games subconsciously tell you that emerges from the gameplay itself. A Ludo narrative. For example, the Ludo narrative that Mario Kart tells you is that to go fast is better and to be first is the best of all. You won't find that spelled out in any dialogue in the game, but it's as clear as day from the gameplay and what the game chooses to reward. When the Ludo narrative that emerges from the gameplay supports the main narrative of your story, then glorious things can happen. But when they're pushing in opposite directions, you can end up with a really disappointing game. So when it comes to David and Goliath, the most obvious kind of gameplay is some kind of slingshot mechanic. You control David. You pull back the sling to give it some power. You aim it to pick your target. And you time it perfectly to hit Goliath in the forehead when his defenses are down. You're always the hero of these games, and for the player it always goes one of two ways. Either you miss, it's too hard, you're left feeling despondent. Wow, I'm not good enough, I'm never gonna kill the giant. Or you kill the giant. Hooray, I'm the best, I killed him first time. And the trouble is, all of this is completely antithetical to everything that the story of David and Goliath is supposed to be about. Firstly, we're not the heroes of 1 Samuel 17. We're more like the quivering Israelite soldiers quaking in their boots, desperately in need of a saviour. David is God's anointed rescuer, the future king who points us to another messiah. Secondly, the message of 1 Samuel 17 is neither you're not good enough, nor is it, you're the best and you can be everything that comes your way. Rather, as David says in verse 47, May all the earth know that there is a God in Israel, and that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give Goliath into our hand. The whole point of this story, literally the whole reason it's in the Bible, is precisely so that we don't think it's about who's the biggest and the strongest and the most skillful and the best aim. If you play a game about David and Goliath and come away thinking that the battle was won because you're so brilliant, then that is completely the opposite of what the story was designed to communicate. Literally, you could not be more wrong. So having been quite so outspoken on this topic for so many years, you can see why the pressure was on as we came to build our own David and Goliath game. So we started by creating the characters. Our concept artist Daniel Starling designed the basic look and costumes, then Greg worked to turn those into the final game assets. Then I had a lot of fun animating them. Goliath is such an expressive character, it was such a joy to work on him. Goliath says, smash the like button below before I feed your flesh to the birds of the air. Ugh. 
to draw and animate David, we did a ton of research about the Balearic Sling and watched that video over and over and over again. But by the end, I was really happy with what we came up with. <sighs> then we started with a scene where you meet David, the shepherd boy. I really wanted to give the player this opportunity to feel like they'd got to know David a little bit and started to get to know his personality. It was the perfect moment to draw from some of the Psalms that David is so famous for and establish some of those basic truths about God's character that you would have sung about. Up on their hands they will bear Then we transition from David's sheep fields to the battlefield where the two armies are lined up against each other either side of the valley. Next up, time to build the environment itself where David and Goliath's confrontation took place. And in a way, all of that was the easy bit. I then spent countless hours scratching my head, trying to figure out how to communicate what I wanted to communicate through this scene. How could I come up with some gameplay where the Ludo narrative lined up with the message that 1 Samuel 17 is trying to get across? And after a while I came up with this concept that I really wanted to tie together the battle with the psalm that David was singing when you first met him. It was those same truths about God from the psalm that were going to power up David to defeat Goliath. And I came out of a kind of visual language to tie the two scenes together. So during the battle, David calls to mind these truths about God that give him the strength to confront Goliath. It felt like such a great idea in my head. And then even before I'd started prototyping it, I started to lose confidence. I just don't think it's clear enough that the two things are connected. And, and if those lyrics just start to appear when you tap the notes, will anyone actually read them? And you know, it all just seems so out of nowhere. Oh, just get on and prototype it, won't you? And then you can figure out solutions to all those things. And sure enough, we came up with some ways to address all of those worries. And sure, the final thing looks a bit different from how I originally imagined, but I am really happy with what we came up with. Hopefully we've come up with something which is both fun to play and which lines up with the message of the story and which does justice to the amazing drama of this passage. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments below how you think we've done. Now we've reached this really fun milestone in the serpent and the seed where we've started to get to the first New Testament scenes where Jesus shows up. Uh, it's been so encouraging to see the amazing progress we've made. I'm so thankful for my incredible team. And if you want to be kept up to date on progress, do make sure you subscribe below. Follow us on social media at Serpent Seed Game and make sure you're signed up to our monthly email newsletter on our website that is linked below.